Manamapi Ishati Putam Atra Surupam Rupam Tasyakraja Muri Purim Mathurim Gostuvatim Radha Kunda Magiri Badam Radhika Madhavasam Prabhu Yasya Pratita Kripaya Sri Guru Tamnatosmi Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhika Itadali Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namunam Ananda Lila Maya Vikrahaya He Mabadevyat Chabi Sundraya Tas my Maha Premara Sapradaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namunam Chaitanya Chandraya Namunam Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Sham Sundar Shikanda Shekhar Smaraha Sumurali Manohara Radhikarasakamama Kripa Nadhe Supriya Charna King Kurim Kuru Tavaivasmi Tavaivasmi Najivami Tayavana Iti Vikyaya Devi Hitam Nayamam Charnantikam First of all, I offer my Sastang Dandavat Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Paramaradya Tamaguru Pada Padma, Nitilila Pravisht Om Vishnu Pada Shtotara Satasri, Rupa Nuga Acharya Varya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis around the world who have gathered together to be absorbed in devotion for our most beloved Gurudev. Vanchakal Paturubhasta Kripa Sindhu Bhavata Putitanam Pavani Bho Vaishnavi Bhionamonma Srila Gurudev himself was exemplary in all activities. So it was his habit when speaking about any Vaishnava or about his Guru to uh, describe Guru Tattva, the Akanda Guru Tattva, and then give the example how that Guru is the instantiation of the individual manifestation of the Akanda Guru Tattva with the anecdotes and pastimes from his life. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Yasya Sakshad Bhagavati, Jnana Deepa Pradhe Guru, Matya Saddi Sultam Tasya, Sarvam Kunjara Sochavat. The spiritual master, Yasya Sakshad Bhagavati, he is directly the Supreme Lord himself manifesting. He is Krishna Kripa Sri Murti. The mercy of the Supreme Lord has come to us in the form of Sri Guru. Jnana Deepa Prade Guru. And Sri Guru is that person, Jnana Deep, who gives the light of transcendental knowledge. That means that material experience, that is the samsaric asakti, the darkness of attachment to material objects. But Guru dispels that darkness of attachment by introducing the light of praying, the light of love for Krishna. So such a person, Matya Saddi Sutam Tasya, if the disciple thinks his Guru is an ordinary human being, or even if he thinks he's not ordinary, he's a great sage who's very learned in the scriptures, then all of his knowledge of scripture all of his study of the Vedas is useless like the bathing of an elephant who was dusty. 
goes into the river, washes off the dust, and then comes out and covers himself with dust again. In other words, that disciple can never come out of the entanglement of material consciousness, while any trace of a mundane conception towards Sri Guru is lingering there anywhere within his heart. So it is essential that the Srila Vishnu said, the disciple should have the conception that my Guru is not only a manifestation of Bhagavan, of Hari, uh, because Krishna has many, many incarnations, but he should think he's the manifestation of Prajandandandan Shama Sunda, the origin of all the avatars. His very mercy personified has come into my life in the form of my Gurudev. Then, if he will serve in this mood, all success will come in spiritual life. In the Upanishads, it is said, Yasya Devi Para Bhakti Yata Devi Tathagaro Tasyaiti Katta Hyata Prakashante Mahatmana. For one, just as he has devotion to Krishna, he has the same amount of devotion to his Gurudev. Then all the mysteries, all the secrets of the scripture become manifest in the heart of that person. But we can say that the Padma Purana goes a step further, that one should not have such devotion to the Guru only equal to God. But, Yata Bhakti Haro Meisti Tadvarista Guru Yadi Mamastitena Satyena Sandashayatu Mehari. It is a devotee praise there, O oh my Lord. If it is true that as I am devoted to you, I have even more devotion to Gurudev than to you, then may you appear before me at once. And then the Supreme Lord appeared to that devotee. So the scripture speaks of Guru in such a way uh, that the success of the disciple's life is to love and serve and be surrendered to Guru even more than to Krishna. So how Gurudev himself was the manifestation before us in this world and how he, he is eternally the embodiment of the Akanda Guru Tattva uh, is best explained by Gurudev himself because Gurudev would explain Guru Tattva and show to us the true meaning of Guru Tattva by his beautiful Kata and by the example of his life. So I'm remembering once there was a, a research scholar he was writing a PhD thesis on gurus and he was traveling all over India and all over the world, interviewing various gurus. He was from, um, I believe, uh, Finland, Dr. Mans Buru. So he came, to, he came to Brindavan and he approached me. He said, oh, can you arrange for me to uh, meet with Srila Narayan Raj? So I said, yes, sir, please wait. So then I went, I spoke with Gurudev and some meeting was arranged. So then Gurudev, he was sitting on a chair in front of the beautiful paintings of uh, Saiva Kunj in uh, Rupsanat and Gaudiamat. And on one side, a group of disciples were sitting there chanting. And then I brought this scholar there and he sat down at Gurudev's feet. And uh, before he'd shown me the questions that he wanted to ask. And so I was very uh, eager, I was very excited to hear Gurudev answer these questions because these were the kind of questions that I think a disciple would never ask his guru. They were kind of um, bold and in your face and, and perhaps could be taken in a, in a way that was uh, faithless. So a disciple doesn't ask the kind of that type of question. So I was wondering how Gurudev will respond. So he sat down in front of Gurudev and he said, the first question was, how do you know that your guru is bona fide? So obviously, we would never ask Gurudev, how do you know that, that Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj is bona fide? It's not a, a question a disciple would ask. But this scholar posed this question to Gurudev. So when Gurudev heard it, then he closed his eyes and he went into a very grave mood. You're all very familiar with Gurudev's gravity. It could uh, pervade the whole atmosphere around him. So then Gurudev said, if you have left everything, if you have given your life day and night, following the instructions of your spiritual master and chanting and remembering under his guidance for 60 years, as I have, 
then you will know whether or not your guru is bona fide. He said, I have uh, realized it, mm? the transcendental position of my spiritual master. So uh, it is a fact that we cannot get all knowledge even at once. It is said that knowledge comes in four ways. First of all, guru gives instruction. And then on top of that, the disciple, he has to study. That is the second quarter of the knowledge. Then the third quarter of the knowledge comes from discussing that knowledge with his God brothers. And then the fourth as part of the knowledge comes only with time. Everything cannot come at once. So Gurudev's instructions, your own study, discussion with your God brothers and God sisters, and then be patient, wait, and all realization will come. So then his next question was, um, when did you decide to be Guru? Then Gurudev, he shook his head. He said, I, I am actually not a Guru. So then that scholar pointed towards Gurudev's disciples and said, well, who are all these disciples then? Gurudev said, they are not my disciples. They are my friends. And together we are making an atmosphere which is favorable for bhajan. So the disciple has one perspective towards his Gurudev, but the Gurudev has another perspective towards the disciples. He never has the Abhiman that he himself is, is Guru. So then the next question. That scholar said, so at the end of your life, when you go to Goloka Brandavan, who will be the next Acharya? Now, this sentence has two parts. At the end of your life, when you go to Goloka Brandavan, who will be the next Acharya? Hmm? But Gurudev got stuck. His mind was stuck and focused on the first part. He said, when I leave, I will not go to Goloka Brandavan. But I am praying that in my next life, I can become a blade of grass on the bank of the Jamuna. So when the Vaishnavas are doing Parikrama of Brandavan, I will get their foot dust. Everyone was shaken to the core by Gurudev's gravity, by Srila Gurudev's humility, by Srila Gurudev's realization. So this type of association with the Mahabhagavat, only this type of association can give one an insight into what Guru Tattva really means. So many verses of, of Shastra can describe outwardly in theory, but unless one has experience in one's life of Sadguru, the scriptures can never be understood. Srila Gurudev used to say that the Sadguru has such affectionate relationships with all of his disciples and that he has a skill and that is that he makes every single disciple feel as if Guru Dave loves me the most. <laughs> so, of course, that is um, a contradiction. Uh, but though it's a contradiction, it's still true. Why? Because spiritual life is not mathematics. It doesn't have to add up like that. It is a question of bhav. So uh, those uh, disciples who associated uh, with Srila Gurudev, uh, very closely, all had that experience that, oh, it's as if he loves me the most. I met Srila Gurudev first time in 1991. I was on Parikrama, the Navadip Parikrama of, uh, of Iskon. At that time, uh, there was good relationships with the Gauriamat, and the whole Parikrama party came to Devananda Gauriamat. I remember Gurudev was sitting there with thousands of Devotees, as you know, Navadip Parikrama is a huge event. And uh, Sila Gurudev was speaking in such a way. I was astonished. I had never heard anything like this before. He was saying that Srila Bhaktino Thakur is mantra vistarini. That means that in one word of his mantra, only in the syllable kling, that syllable opens out and he sees the whole of Vrindavan there. Mm. So uh, this made a very deep impression on me. And then after some time, I was, 
as you know, under the guidance of Srila Gorgovina Maharaj until 96 when Srila Gorgovina Maharaj manifested his astonishing disappearance pastime. And then he uh, inspired me to uh, come to the lotus feet of uh, Srila Gurudev. So Srila Gurudev's preaching was miraculous. He very kindly kept me with him and took me on the many world tours about uh, 24 times. I had to go all over the world with Gurudev to very many countries and see what was going on. People cannot, uh, who don't have faith in Gurudev cannot understand how he's preaching. It wasn't a propaganda. His preaching was not on the material platform, but his preaching was by pure bhakti shakti, just the power of Samvit and Ladini, the Shuddha Sattva, Sattva Visheshatma, transcendental bhav was emanating from Gurudev and changing everyone that he met in a miraculous way. Not only that, but I experienced many times when I was uh, traveling with him, I would meet a devotee and they would say that before Gurudev came there, he appeared in their dream and preach to them. And so before he arrived, they're already clamoring to meet him and, and surrender at his lotus feet. So Gurudev didn't even have to be seen by anyone or influence them even by his presence. presence. He could do it at a distance. He was not limited by time and space in any way. And this experience I had many times. So the first time Sila Gurudev went to Australia, uh, before he arrived, there was one devotee there. Gurudev was going to stay in his house. So that devotee, he thought, I should uh, make my house nice and I should prepare the garden so it's all nice when, when he comes. And he'd never met Gurudev before. He did not consider him his guru even. Only he thought, let me host this Vaishnava. So he, he took a strimmer and the, the grass was long in his garden. He took a strimmer and he was strimming down the grass with this uh, uh, machine. And he came at the end of the garden and the, he was there in the long grass and a snake was there. And by accident, he killed the snake with the strimmer. So then uh, the next day, Srila Gurudev arrived and in the morning, Gurudev wanted to go on a walk. So he was walking around the garden and he was, it was a bit uneven. So he was keeping his hand on the shoulder of that devotee. And as they were walking to that exact spot where the day before, He'd killed the snake, but he never told anyone. Gurudev stopped and he looked at him. He said, do you have snakes in Australia? <laughs> so then his heart jumped out. He said, uh, yes, yes, but still he didn't say anything. Then Gurudev looked in his eyes and said, don't kill them. <laughs> so then that devotee who he did not have a, a strong faith in Gurudev, already Gurudev was working on his heart and showing him, Oh, I am a transcendental, supernatural personality. So um, I'm remembering this pastime because uh, there, there was uh, Gurudev himself illustrated in a beautiful way the nature of Guru Tattva. In the morning program, Gurudev sat and he was chanting Japa, the informal just darshan. And some devotees came in and sat down at his feet. So as we know that when Gurudev looks at us, he can see right into the core of our heart. Why? Because he's already there in the heart. Sri Guru is like the Paramatma. Yam prabrajantam anupayitam upayita krityam dvai payano virakatara ajuhava putreti tanma teo taravo binedus tang sarva bhuta ridayam muni adna tosmi. As Sutta Goswami said, Oh, I bow down to my Guru, Shukadev Goswami, who can enter into the heart of all living beings and speak to me through them. So Gurudev looked at that person and that person was uh, in a state of uh, some confusion in his spiritual life. And Gurudev pointed to him and he said, you, your heart is divided. And what? What do you mean? And the reason is this, his Harinam Guru was Srila Prabhupada. His Diksha Guru was Srila Bhaktirakshak Shida Maharaj. And Gurudev was his Shiksha Guru. So he had three Gurus, 
but he could not uh, reconcile these three personalities in his life and understand, well, who do I serve? Who do I worship? Who do I follow? They've all given different presentations and so on. So Gurudev could see this. And so he said, your heart is divided. He said, but you should solve it. You should reconcile it in this way. And Gurudev gave an example from his own life. He said, when I used to sit at the lotus feet of my Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami, sometimes he would be speaking about Vedanta Sutra. And when I listened to his explanation of the Vedanta Sutra at that time, I looked and it was exactly as if Baladev Vidyabhushan, the commentator of Vedanta Sutra, had appeared there and was explaining Vedanta Sutra to me. Then, when my Gurudev was explaining about Bhakti Tattva, sometimes I looked at him and it was just as if Srila Jiva Goswami Pad himself, who has written Bhakti Sandarbha, was explaining Bhakti Tattva to me. And at other times, I would look at my Gurudev and he would be telling sweet pastimes of Radha Krishna and explaining Rasa Tattva. And at that time, I felt as if Srila Rupa Goswami Pad himself was speaking to me. So in this way, the Sadhguru is the embodiment of Akanda Guru Tattva. And all the personalities of the Guru Prampara are present there. And he is a transparent divine media for their voices. You should reconcile it in this way. So, uh, think about it, consider it very deeply. And uh, because this is such a beautiful uh, description of Guru Tattva, even in scripture you cannot find anything so sweet. I'm remembering how mm, one morning I was uh, in Mathura and, uh, and on, the, on the top floor, staying in one room there, and I was sitting and I was uh, chanting Japa in the morning time. And from time to time, I would look at one book that is called the uh, Gora Radha Govinda Archan Smaran Padati of Jnana Chandra Goswami. So now and then I was looking at that book and then sitting and, and chanting. So some of you may be familiar with that, that text. So in the meantime, a big... Uh, how can we say, a bit of a scandal or something was going on. I had, I had no idea about what was going on. One uh, young uh, girl, devotee, probably you all know her. I don't, if I mention her name, she won't uh, uh, mind, I'm sure. Madhavi from uh, Alachua. She was, uh, she'd gone and she was sitting chanting outside of uh, the room of Uma Didi. So my window was here. And then there was an alleyway behind, and then there was Uma Didi's room. So she went and she sat down outside Uma Didi's door, and she was chanting there because she had so much respect for Uma Didi. Uh, so she said she was there for that reason. And so Gurudev was on a morning walk, and uh, some devotees came to him and said, Oh, that uh, one girl is chanting outside the window of Prem Prayojan. Now, my window was closed. It had wooden wooden uh, shutters, so I didn't see or know anything. And when Gurudev came back from his morning walk, he went up to the top floor and he went directly there and came and he punched her, <laughs> actually in, in the face even, and told her, get out, get out, get out. So I didn't know anything, but later I was considering how Srila Gurudev was very, very protective to his uh, brahmacharis and sannyasis who were staying in the mat, very, very protective. So then about uh, half an hour later, there was a knock on my door. Oh, Srila Gurudev is calling you. Please uh, come to his room. So then I got up and uh, I left behind that book, the Padati of Jana Chandra Goswami. And there was a question I wanted to ask uh, Gurudev. So I picked up one old Sanskrit book a sannyasi had given to me called uh, Sankalpa Kalpa Druma. It's a collection of many uh, Sanskrit verses, in, only in Sanskrit. It was a very old book, and the cover was falling apart. I was looking for a verse there, so this sannyasi gave me this book with the cover that was uh, broken and falling apart. So I thought, I want to ask Gurudev a question from this, so let me bring this with me. So I picked up that book, and I went into Gurudev's room. So I, I gave Pranam at his lotus feet, 
And then Gurudev said, mm, we don't follow that book. And of course, I have a book in my hand. So I said, this book? He said, no, 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 not that book. Dhyana Chandra Goswami's Padati. And then I was so uh, astonished that G Gurudev, though he was in his room there, he knew I what book I was reading in another room with all the doors and windows closed. And as soon as he said, no, 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 we don't follow that. So these, there are many examples in those devotees who are associated closely with Gurudev, how he knew everything that we were doing and how he knew every secret thought in our mind, every movement of our heart. He, Gurudev himself said, I am closer to you than the air you breathe. So then, after we had a discussion, then Gurudev pointed to the, um, to the book I was carrying. And he said, this uh, book has a torn cover. That is an offense. And I, I said, uh, I'm sorry, Gurudev, this is not my book. Someone just gave it to me. He said, look, this is what you should do. If you have a scripture and it's old, you should repair the cover, make it nicely and cover it with um, decorative cloth. The, the scripture should be dressed beautifully because it's like a deity. And he said, and if you always have this mood of respect towards the scripture and dress your books beautifully, then you'll see that Shastra has creeper. In other words, when you are reading, then the Shastra itself will bestow mercy on you. So uh, that leads me to another very beautiful um, exchange that uh, I had the good fortune to have with Gurudev. Once Gurudev was in Hawaii, and I had been preaching somewhere else, and, and I flew in and I arrived there. As soon as I arrived, some devotees came to me and said, oh, uh, do, do you want to come on a boat to see whales, to go whale watching? So I said, no, I, I come here on Gurudev's order for preaching, for doing prachar. I'm not going to waste my time in any things like this. He said, okay. He said, because there's there are only room for about a dozen people on the boat. So uh, you, uh, we gave you priority, but if you don't want to come, no problem. So then he went away. Then afterwards, I found out that uh, Gurudev himself was going on this boat, watching the whales. So then one devotee came to Gurudev and said, Gurudev, Prem Parajan said that going on this boat is Maya <laughs> because we have come here to do service. So it looked like, it looked as if I had made some criticism towards Gurudev, but it was not, the situation was not like that. Um, so everyone went and uh, I, most of the devotees there at the festival couldn't go. So uh, Gurudev told me, you stay behind and you give a class to them so the, the morning will not be wasted. So I stayed behind and gave class. And then uh, Gurudev came back. So then afterwards, I went into his room. Gurudev called me. And uh, I came there. He said, did you say that uh, I have gone in a boat and it is not Anya Abhilasta Shunyam Gyan Kama Dinavritam? I said, no, Gurudev. I said, I came here to serve you, and uh, I did not know that you were going there. He said, okay, okay. I said, but Gurudev, I do have one question. I have one question. Why did you go to see, why did you want to go and see a whale? <laughs> because it's an interesting thing. Gurudev is traveling everywhere. He's following Rupa Goswami. Why would he go on a, a tourist rented boat out in the ocean in Hawaii to go whale watching? It uh, seems like a strange thing. So then Gurudev said to me, he said, in Chaitanya Chardamrita, there Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami Pad has described that when Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura, then the ocean of the gopis' love, the love of gopis in separation was like a huge ocean with huge waves. And the gopis were being tossed here and there by the waves in this ocean of separation. And in that ocean, there were Timingila fish. So a Timingila fish is a huge, huge um, aquatic animal. It is so big, it can even swallow whales. He said, so Krishnadas Kavraj Goswami said that the calm, the calm, that is the, the intense desire of the gopis to please uh, Krishna through their amorous services, 
So the column of the gopis is like a teeming gila fish in that ocean, and it keeps attacking and swallowing them. So he said, so for this reason, after hearing this kata, which was described by Krishna's Kavraj Goswami, I wanted to go and see what a whale is like as a Uddipana to remember this bar of the separation of Braja Gopis. So when I heard this, I became overjoyed. And, uh, and then Gurudev said a very wonderful thing. He said, I am very happy that you asked me this question because no one asked me this question. He said, I am happy that you are not afraid to inquire on these things from me because when I was a young devotee, I was also not afraid. I always used to go to my Gurudev and ask questions again and again. Even if Gurudev would say something, then sometimes, respectfully, if I saw something else in scripture that seemed to be different, then I would say, but Gurudev, in the scripture it says this. And I would not challenge him, not in a challenging mood, but uh, uh, initiate some uh, back and forth on the make a purva paksha. In other words, make an opposing argument so that the siddhanta can be established. So then Gurudev said, I always used to ask my Gurudev questions like this, sometimes the difficult questions, and I was never afraid. And you were also like that. So I am very pleased. Then, uh, in contrast to that experience, some years later, we are in Mathura. And at that time, I was studying the uh, Preeti Sandarbha of Srila Jiva Goswami, and I had some questions for Srila Gurudev. So I went into his room, and he was sitting on his bed in his bhajan kutia. I sat down at his feet. And uh, then I showed him the, the Sanskrit text. And we were going through some verses. And I was asking a lot of questions. And then Gurudev said, why are you always asking questions? Gurudev said, I never asked questions to my Gurudev. <laughs> so then I reminded Gurudev. I said, uh, Gurudev, do you remember when we were at that time, when you went to see the whale, you said to me, that you always used to ask questions to your Gurudev and you were never afraid, and that I should always ask you questions. And today you are saying, why are you asking questions? I never ask questions to my Gurudev. So Gurudev, how can we, I reconcile your two instructions on these two occasions? Then Gurudev said, actually, there were two phases in my life. He said, my first phase was when I left my home and I came to Navadweep. And I lived with my Gurudev, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj. I traveled with him to many places and I, I was hearing from him, studying, and I used to ask him many questions. But then, after some time, he sent me and put me in charge of the Math in Mathura. At that time, I was now very far away physically and I had no opportunity to ask questions. And uh, Gurudev gave me the service of translating Jaiva Dharma and other books. So Gurudev was explaining that when I was translating Srila Bhakti Nautaku's Bengali Jaiva Dharma into Hindi, then at that time I would read something and I wasn't sure what it meant. And my Gurudev was very far away in Navadvip and I was in Braj Mandal. So what could I do? At that time, I used to fold my hands and Gurudev, he, he folded his hands. And I closed my eyes and I prayed, Oh, Gurudev, please reveal to me, what does Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur mean here? What is he describing? And after praying to my Gurudev, then always he would inspire me and the meaning would appear in my heart. So uh, in this way, Srila Gurudev described that Shastra has Kripa and also Guru's Kripa is there if there's something we don't understand, we can ask Vaishnavas. But if that opportunity isn't there, just close your eyes and pray. And Gurudev will come in your heart and inspire you with the answer. So, oh, Yashodananda Prabhu, do we have more time? Or no? How much more time would you like, Prabhu? Gurudev's glories are unlimited. So you <laughs> come and go for I'll another just go five. Until that point. <laughs> Either end there or another five minutes, up to you. That's it. If, if you agree, I'll speak just another five minutes. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Srila Gurudev has so many specialities. He's, 
has a prakrita nishta. That means a supernatural faith, a supernatural fixity in so many tattvas. His guru nishta is a prakrita. His nam nishta, his faith in the name. Sadhu sangha nishta, his faith in the power of sadhu sangha. His dham nishta, his faith in the dham. Actually, each one of these nishtas itself can be um, a, a whole uh, uh, class. His gopi nishta, his faith in braj gopis, and especially his radha nishta, his strong uh, determination and loyalty to Shimati Radharani. And that came out uh, when Gurudev would speak on any subject. He would speak on many things, if it was Dhruva Maharaj or Pulad Maharaj, Ambrish Maharaj. But in the end, he would always come to the point, to the prayojan, that is Radha Dasyam. Our goal of life is the service of, of Radharani. So Gurudev used to say that the gopis are so glorious that if you are just touched by the air that has touched the Qatar, glorifying the gopis from the mouth of a pure Vaishnava, if that air will touch you, then there is no doubt at all. Very soon, you will attain Krishna Prem and go to Goloka Vrindavan in this life or the next life. So his nishta was in the glories of a gopis was so powerful. Once a devotee asked him, Oh, Gurudev, can I worship Lord Nishingadev? And Gurudev said, why do you want to worship Lord Nishingadev? You should worship Lalita Saki. She's more ferocious than Lord Nishingadev. Yeah. Oh, once well, I remember we were in uh, Govardhan, and in the early days when we used to stay in Modi Bhavan before the, the temple was built there, and Gurudev invited some sadhus from outside to come and they were glorifying um, Govardhan. So one sadhu began to sing a, a poem in Braj Basha. He said, Radha to Barabhagini. Kon kaptapasya kin tin loka tan tan so teri adin. So this bridge bus uh, poem says that, O oh, Shimati Radhika, what austerities have you performed that Krishna, who is the Lord of all the three worlds, has become subordinate to you? So Gurudev, he didn't even, this is a famous poem, but Gurudev didn't listen to the end of the poem. When that sadhu from outside began to sing, Radhe tu Barabhagini, Kon Tapasya Kin, O Radharani, you are so fortunate. What austerities have you performed? Gurudev immediately stopped him. He said, No, don't say that. Don't say, Radharani, you are so fortunate. What austerities have you performed? You should say, Krishna, you are so fortunate. What austerities have you performed that you can associate with my Radharani? <laughs> So Gurudev uh, never allowed any slip. N nothing could slip by him that minimized the glories of Radhika in any way or put Krishna into a superior position. Uh, so I only have a very few minutes. So I want to just touch on one more uh, very confidential pastime. Perhaps you know that Gurudev used to say, if you chant Hari, Harinam, then Yoga Shema Vaham Yaham, whatever you need in your life, if you leave all things and just chant Hare Krishna, whatever you need, Krishna will bring it. Gurudev said, I have this experience in my life. And the example he gave is that Many years ago, when his Gurudev was still in this world, Gurudev was in charge of the um, Keshav Ji Gaudiya Mat. So at one point, Gurudev just disappeared from the Mat. And you, you may have heard sometimes uh, some devotees who have tried to discredit Gurudev and criticize Gurudev. They say that once he left his Guru and he went to Babaji's in Radha Kund, and then he got teachings there, and then he came back and he's giving some teaching which is not in our line. Some, some persons have tried to make some discredit he, uh, of Gurudev here. But everyone should know what really actually happened. So Gurudev used to say that once I went to uh, Govardhan with nothing, 
with no money, no food. And at that time, there was a flood. There was heavy rain. Everything became flooded. I didn't know where to go. And at that time, uh, one panda, that is our um, Giridari panda. Now he passed away, but he was the panda of our Parakrama party of Gurudev. And his father was the panda of Param Gurudev. And his father was the, the panda of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, their family. And his father was the panda of Srila Bhakti no Thakur in Govardhan. So our line and this family of pandas in Govardhan have a long history together. So when Gurudev came there, he said, the panda met with me and he said, oh, I'll give you a place to stay and took him to one deserted house near Manasi Ganga and said, you can stay there. And he was bringing Giraj Mahaprasad to Gurudev there. And Gurudev was uh, chanting Harinam day and night and weeping. And actually, this is the place where Srila Gurudev had the pastime of attaining his Siddhi, his Swarup Siddhi, his perfection. Uh, just like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, uh, between the age of uh, uh, 31 and 41, from uh, 1905 to 1915, chanted a billion names in that place called Brajapatan in Navadweep. That was the place where Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur had his pastime of becoming a Siddha. Of course, our Acharyas, they're all Nitya Siddha coming to this world, but they have that pastime. Um, Perhaps you know when Srila Bhakti Stansu Thakur passed away uh, from this world, became unmanifest. He was in Calcutta and it was our Param Gurudev who brought him there to Brajapatan and put him in Samadhi because it is a desire of the Vaishnava that they want to be in Samadhi in that place where they attain their Siddhi. So this broken old house was very, very dear to Gurudev because it was a place where he had his leela of attaining his uh, Siddhi. And many years ago, uh, I had the opportunity, I also uh, ran away from the mat, disappeared without telling anyone, and went to that house and stayed there for a few days chanting, only to remember Gurudev. So now, uh, at that time, Gurudev was uh, doing his bhajan there. This is where this rumor comes about Gurudev. So I was wondering... What is the true story of this? And I knew that in this world, at that time, there was a Vaishnava who was still alive and very close to Gurudev who must know about this. So that is Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. So just uh, um, about uh, a, a couple of years before Srila Pujapar uh, Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj left this world, on Radastami, he came to Govardhan and he did Abhishek of Radharani there, and he was uh, laying the foundation stone of a new mat at Govardhan, somewhere close to Yatipur. So I went there to that festival, and after he did the Abhishek, he went into his room, and Srila Bhakti began, Bharti Maharaj is very old now and about to leave this world. He was lying on his bed in his room. So at that time, actually, Madhav Priyaprabhu was serving him, and we were quite close. So I asked him, oh, can you arrange? I want to speak very privately with Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj. So he said, yes, yes, of course, come. So then I went inside and I knelt down at the side of the bed of Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj. And I said, Maharaj, I have a question. And in the whole world, only you can answer this question. When Gurudev was uh, younger, he left the mat and he went and he did bhajan alone at uh, Govardhan, at Manasiganga. So can you tell me what was uh, happened at that time? Because you were associated with him in those days. So then Maharaj very mercifully explained to me the whole very beautiful pastime. First of all, he said that in those days, Srila Gurudev felt that the, some other devotees in the mart, they were not appreciating his service and they were making some problems for him and uh, some obstacles in his bhajan. So he wanted to go and spend some time alone and go deeply into the holy names. So without telling anyone anything, he went there to Manasiganga and did bhajan in that house. But there's one person he told, and who is that? Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj said, he told me. Because at that time, Gurudev was feeling an intense urge to study the Ujjwala Nilamani of Rupa Goswami. 
with the commentary of Jiva Goswami, Lochan Rochini, and the commentary of Vishwacharitako Ananda Chandrika. But in those days, that book was very rare. It was almost impossible to get a, comment, uh, a copy of that book and the commentaries. So Srila Bhaktivigyan Bhartimaj said, while Gurudev was staying in Manasi Ganga, that he wrote a letter to him and said, please, can you find a copy of this book for me and uh, bring it to me or send it to me some way. So then Srila Bhaktivigyan Bhartimaraj, he said, I had this uh, fortunate service. And he said, I went to so many bookshops, the esoteric scriptural bookshops in Delhi, where the scholars go. I could not find it anywhere. I went in Mathura, Vrindavan. I could not find it anywhere. He said, in the end, I went to Calcutta. And there are some uh, scholarly uh, places there where they have many books. He said, and there in Calcutta, I found a copy of this Ujwa Nilamani with these two tikas. And then uh, I uh, sent this to uh, Srila Narayan Maharaj. So then I said to him, Oh Maharaj, some people say that when Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj found out that my Gurudev had gone away from the mat, that he was very upset. Hmm? So what happened? Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj said, I was there when the news came to Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj that Srila Narayan Maharaj had disappeared somewhere. He said, I was there. And he said, and I saw that when the devotees told this to Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj began to tremble and he was weeping. Many, many tears were flowing from his eyes. And Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj, he said, you should understand this pastime in this way. During the Rasalila, Krishna disappeared and all Braj Gopis were weeping. So he has many reasons for doing that, many Rasik reasons. But one uh, outer reason is this, that how, how deep is the love for the Braj Gopis? For Krishna, no one can know. But at the time of separation, their hearts are broken and that love is pours out and then someone can see how great is their love. So Krishna, one of the reasons Krishna disappeared from the rasa, so that all gopis would become maddened in separation and then the world would know something about the greatness of their love. He said, so in a similar way, you should see it in this way, that uh, the Supreme Lord, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, has arranged for this pastime when Srila Narayan Maharaj disappeared from the mat. And Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj was crying in order to reveal to the whole world how deep was the love of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj for Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj. So I became overjoyed hearing his uh, description. And then he said, so don't have any doubt. He said, Srila Narayan Maharaj told me that he did meet with the uh, Babas in Manasi Ganga that is the line of Priya Charandas Babaji and Manohar Das Babaji. And he was trying to explain to them the Vichadara, the current of the conception of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur. He said, but uh, they would not change. They, they would not uh, hear it. And uh, he said, and the proof that Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj has complete faith in your Gurudev is this, that after he completed his bhajan, and his leela of attaining his city, when he came back to the march, then Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj re-established him as the uh, head of the Keshav Jigodya Maharaj uh, for the rest of his uh, pastimes uh, during this world. So uh, in this way, by this pastime, the very beautiful relationship between our Gurudev and Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj has been uh, manifest uh, before the people of the world. So in this way, I am offering my Shraddha Pushpanjali, my heart like flowers, thousands of times at the feet of Srila Gurudev. I am a conditioned soul. I cannot uh, touch uh, the ocean of his glories. Uh, but uh, somehow the, by his mercy, some breeze from that ocean carries some droplets and change my life. On the basis of that, I've tried to make an offering at his lotus feet. So if there is any mistake, please uh, forgive me. And uh, I pray that again and again, I will be able to have your association and together we can serve and glorify our Gurudev.
वंचकल्पतुरुवस्त कृपासिंधुवेरच्छा पुतितानं पावने बिओ वैष्णवे बिओ नमः